it's the second day of Black History Month. So I think it's only right that we kind of just switch to a more serious tone and maybe talk a little bit about Tyree Nichols or the stories that have come about from, you know, the tragedy that occurred with Tyree Nichols. One that really struck a chord with me was Jason Whitlock's reaction to uh, what happened with Tyree Nichols. Okay. Now, did you catch that, by the way? Yeah, I caught that. I caught that. I didn't think it fit the situation, what he was saying. All right. Well, let's just play it for the audience so they know. Um, Let me see. I definitely didn't think it fit the situation, what he was trying to say. But (laughs) yeah, he was basically trying to blame the situation on single mothers. Was that it? Yeah, that's what I heard. You get me? That's what it seemed like he said, right? Right. I didn't he, yes. I didn't actually hear it right from him on what he actually said. It'd be good for us to, to take that. So yeah, I didn't have it ready to go, but let me see if I can pull it up. So it's you know, I don't want to put no words in his mouth, but I was hearing from other people, you know, what they said he was saying. Yeah. I don't want to get it wrong either. <laughs> oh yeah he says something about baby mama culture uh i got baby the one from oh, yeah i got the one that he did with tucker carlson and then maybe we'll go to the little video that comedy hype had on it too yeah that's what i'll do i'll go to jason whitlock and tucker and then we'll go to the uh we're gonna hear yeah. what he said though first, right? I don't want to be jumping on the man neck, and I don't know, you know, unless you want me to jump on his neck now. If you just want me to jump on the man neck, no, 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 I'm gonna I'm share it with you. I'm pulling it up right now. I mean, something else before I get into this, and I, I heard the I hate to beat around the bush with it, so if you listen and then bear with me, but remember when Jason Whitlock. I got to go back to Kyrie again. Remember when Jason Whitlock was defending the Hebrew Israelites that was marching outside of the game? When that happened, a lot of people on my timeline was like, dang, I wouldn't expect that kind of sport from Jason Whitlock because to them it looked like Jason Whitlock had a pro-black stance. Okay. Right? A lot of people were fooled by that. And what they didn't realize is Jason Whitlock was only supporting the Hebrew Israelites, in my opinion, because they perpetuate the same kind of hate that Jason Whitlock perpetuates. You know, they're going to be hard on gay people. They're going to be highly religious, you know, and he says stuff that is along the lines of religious extremism. So that was kind of like right up his alley. To me, he's more of a radical Christian guy, a radical Christian conservative. That's okay. the guy who he is. So that's why you see him talking with Tucker Carlson and stuff like that. But not to put any words in his mouth, I got the uh, I got the video pulled up, and we're gonna hear a little bit from Jason Whitlock while he basically he's basically dragging my mom. If you put if you if you Dang. if you really. Want to put it in perspective for me? You're going there, yeah. That's how. That's what it sound like to me. You know? Yeah. Oh, he be on Fox. Yeah, he be on oh, Fox, man. man. He got his own little show. Let's just get into it. To take us to a good place, I would examine the racial element of this because there yeah. is a racial element, and this is a story about young black men and their inability to treat each other in a humane way. Everybody involved in this on the street level was either 24 to 32 years old. Everybody, group of young black men, five on one. 
looked like gang violence to me. It, it looked like mm-hmm. what young black men do when they're supervised by a single black woman. And that's <laughs> what they good. got going right on now. in the Memphis Police Department. They've elected some uh, or put some black woman in charge of the police force. And we're getting the same. Let's pause. You said that sounds good. What part sounded good to you? What he was saying about uh, what it looked like that, you know, it looks like gang violence. That's what it looked like to me, what they was in. As far as the beating on Tyree Nichols. Okay, so that's the part that you said. So yeah, I agree with him on that. Okay. Kind of chaos and disunity and violence that we see in a lot of these cities that are run by single mothers. They're, if we want to discuss the breakdown of family that leads to disrespect for authority that causes you to resist the police and run from the police and not comply with the police because you resist authority at all time because there was no male authority in your home. Let's have that discussion. But that's not where they want to take us. They want to take us down the path of saying, you know what, this is Tucker Carlson's fault. This is some random white. This is Donald Trump's fault. It's not. It's the breakdown Mm -hmm. of family and the buying in to all these left wing things that have nothing to do with promotion family you've been on the show wow. so many times every single time you see something. <laughs> wow that's that's what they talk about <sighs> yeah i mean he really didn't hold back did he <laughs> he really just well what i can what i could take from what he said the breakdown of family part when he said the. Uh, you know the 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 single woman running the department this is what you're going to get that's when it was like yeah i don't think her playing a part of over the department had anything to do with it but i can understand where he could say a breakdown in family can have some kids with not having that discipline at home but what he is he talking about the police officers or is he talking about the kid who died you get what i mean like where well, you it going sounds like it? he was blaming the victim. He said it sounded like he was saying yeah, that bl- this happened to Tyree Nichols because he didn't have a father at home, so he didn't learn to respect respect authority, and because he was resisting, uh, he got dealt with. That's what it seems like. <laughs> I would. That's what like it seems you, like. Yeah, I don't saying. know. Right, right. I don't know who he was talking about with the broken home. Was it the officers or right? If he's talking about Tyree Nichols, yes, man. You're. I mean. I don't think the broken home had anything to do with him losing his life. Seems like he was complaining. Jason Whitlock seems to be. Yeah. But any and he even blamed women again. Jason Whitlock doesn't appear to like women. He blames women again because he said the officers are behaving how men behave when they're being run by black women or single black women. I think people need to wake up, man. This is the same guy that they thought was pro-black when he was defending the Hebrew Israelites that was marching outside of the Barclays Center. This is the guy that he's always been. So I hope people got their wake-up call, those people who thought that he was on their side. I hope they realize that he's in the same bag as Candace Owens. He gets paid by these right-wing people to... Blame everything on black people, mm. you know, and we now know that there's evidence, there's data to suggest that black people are killed and brutalized at a much more frequent rate than other races when it comes to, uh, you know, dealing with police. Yeah. Yeah. But th- there's no evidence that suggests that the color of the police officer makes any difference in us getting killed or getting beat up so this is a policing problem and it, and it's crazy how he manages to blame everything on black women and black people and he never mentions it being a policing problem this police culture of you know brutality and stuff like that and violence that we've seen for years and years they're saying that since before Rodney King, but I mean, that's going on all the time. And he never says anything about white supremacy. Right. 
you know that's what put us you you want to yeah you want to talk about you know families being broken let's talk about how redlining broke families let's talk about how the accrued failure the accumulated failure of of slavery that these families have to cause and their property values going down you know just from being black how that could break up a family how we always going to be you know second class citizens in this country because we got a two-tier justice system that's the kind of stuff he should be talking about not blaming it on the um, a a marginalized group and especially not this guy that seems to be a nice guy from everything i could see you know he moved back to california to help his mom he was in the skateboarding a lot of people Listen, got nice not, things. Oh, to, he's talking about the dude. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy okay. Nichols. A, a lot of people got nice things to say about him. It just, you know, it just seems like Jason Whitlock doing what he does. I think I got another um video where this guy uh you know they got another uh little clip of him. Let's see if I can find it. I think comedy hype had a video. Breaking down some things that he it's said. Got 230 subs. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. This is Jason Whitlock's response. What do you want? Oh, what a job. Let me see if I could just let that uh ad go by real quick, and then I want to get to about yeah it was one minute, minute, one minute mark. Where yeah, it wasn't start. nothing that boy could uh it wasn't nothing that a family could have did for him then you know yeah in the situation that mr <laughs> nichols was in right yeah one yeah. nothing yeah that's just just a that's red, a red a red herring he's using you know um, but it is a problem our broken families is a problem in our community i mean yeah but that's a problem that's a, that's whole a, another, uh, yeah, that's mean, a conversation for another this. day yeah yeah i'm not gonna allow him to distract use me that what's yeah. going on <laughs> you know that's a red herring we're gonna get into what a red herring is too but let's hear his uh his response oh, off. oh yeah you're right let's go is more out of line with god's natural order and instead and instead while King criticizing single black women today we have our company hype analyst many options i'm trying to find the beginning when he started talking my bad order say he the black people 70 percent of our kids born to unwed mothers we don't view family as a necessity for success it's just one of many options the matriarchy it doesn't work right so critics say my criticism is off base because tyree nichols has a mother and a stepfather and that the city's female police chief cyril and davis is married and a mother no one survives a rotten culture unscathed the Mm -hmm. pervasiveness of baby mama culture harms everyone including the non-participants forced to operate within it police start gangs to combat gang violence young men without fathers in the home are attracted to gangs. Baby mama culture celebrates gang involvement. Black men see black women as our leaders, our saviors. I don't. We got preachers sitting in pool pits <laughs> that want to tell you, well, it's it's from slavery 150 years ago. And until we resolve slavery from 150 years ago, there's nothing we can do about it. It's a joke. And, and I'm the one catching criticism for saying, hey, this is about the family. This is about a matriarchal culture. That's how crazy this thing is. That's how dishonest this whole thing is. The system that's going on right now is about the destruction of male leadership. And all the leverage in a relationship has been thrown to one side, women. And black women have run wild with it. And I don't care if that pisses you <laughs> off, but that's the reality. They've taken that leverage. I don't need no man. I'll have his baby. And then I will hold that baby over his head like a gun. I will use all this system that we've constructed that's to emasculate that women, man. Jason. Now, while there are many things wow. that we can. That's crazy. This guy gets paid to do that. This guy gets paid to do that. 
He generalizing the, you know, they'll take the bad part. They'll take the, uh, you get me, the, 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 the negatives out of, you know, a situation that they can find and it'll just, he just blow that up. But that's not, all women ain't like that. You can't, you know, we got bad apples in every, you know, it's a, it, it's a couple bad apples you can point out all the time. But just to point that out in this I don't see where it relates. I don't see where, you know, we talking about police brutality here or we talking about families. Like, what are we talking about? You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, where we at? Like, if you want to talk about families, we could talk about families now. You get me? But right now we talking about police brutality on Nicholas. So it's like, how... What could you know? How would that been fixed if he would have had uh, his father and all? What would have made that situation different? Listen, man. There's people who got fathers in the home that join gangs. He's painting with a broad brush, and he's arguing in bad faith. I think he's. You think he's a little deep. bit too smart to even believe the stuff that he's saying. I'm going to put you on to what he's doing. Hold on. It's important that we bring stuff like this up. <laughs> you see my screen? Yeah. What he's using is called a red herring. And a red herring is something that misleads or distracts from a relevant or important question. It may be either a logical fallacy or a literary device that leads readers or audiences toward a false conclusion. A red herring may be used intentionally as in mystery fiction or as part of a rhetorical strategy or may be used in argumentation inadvertently. The term was popularized in 1807 by English polemicist William Cobet, who told a story. Oh, the, uh, oh. Thank you for that correction. 1807 by English polemicist William Cobet, who told the story of having used a strong smelling smoked fish to divert and distract hounds from chasing a rabbit. So where I'm going with that is we don't even need to be given that too much time. His whole narrative of this being about single black women and their father not being in a home. Yeah, That's sure. what he wants. This is about men, some a, a, a group of goofy gangsters that were spray painted, spray pepper spraying each other and beating a young man to death when they could have de escalated the situation, when they could have apprehended him and took him to jail. They didn't have a license to do him like that. And it's not something that's new to us. I mean, when we see high speed chases, where we're from right you'll notice that when the police catch up with the guys usually on the news they turn the camera away because everybody knows what's about to happen <laughs> if you put the police on the chase when they catch you they're gonna beat you boy yeah that's just a known thing they did me like that they've done they a lot of us like, like that. that i've i've been a victim <laughs> of police brutality in my day mm-hmm you know, so this is not nothing new to me, and I'm not going to let Jason Whitlock play the mind games with me and we talk about the black family and all of that. I mean, that could be easily – that 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 just argument, it doesn't stand. It falls, you know, with any real um, criticism. Yeah, it don't fit the story. But, yeah. Fit the story. Yeah, it don't fit the story at all. But, okay, that's a whole nother – topic that we can discuss but it has nothing to do with you know this scenario but i can say we do have an issue with broken families but we can't bring that up right now we got to bring up police brutality you know yeah that's the issue at hand that's the issue at hand um there was also a nasty rumor that came up by now i hope everybody uh kind of realizes that you know, those stories about Tyree Nichols being involved in an affair is just not true. I mean, we have no evidence <laughs> of that being true. Um, a lot of people thought this was a real thing, though. I mean, I have friends 
sharing this on their timeline and wow um, it's not even you know it wasn't verified by anybody and uh i've seen it debunked on newsweek so see. it wasn't verified so we can't say it's true or not true basically yeah well, unless we got evidence that it's not true i mean if you're gonna make a oh. claim yeah you if you're gonna make a claim you gotta have evidence you know you can't switch the burden of proof on the other person like say like now we gotta prove that it's not true no yeah what evidence does anybody have to say that which is nothing most people just read a headline and shared it without verifying it they were just thirsty for a story and maybe they couldn't wrap their heads around uh, a group of black guys beating another black guy to death which you know for some reason people like to feel you know, if they if if we're scared of cops, they feel like they should feel safer if it's a black cop. If we black, there's no evidence to suggest that that was ever a smart way to look at that situation. But we'll go through this just for clarity. Uh, Tyree Nichols rumor mm. connection to cops ex wife under investigation. The Memphis. Uh, the Memphis Police Department is currently investigating rumors regarding a possible connection between Tyree Nichols and the ex-wife or ex-girlfriend of one of the Memphis cops arrested and charged in Nichols' death. On Wednesday morning, Newsweek asked the Shelby County District Attorney's Office if it is investigating possible rumors connecting Nichols to the ex-girlfriend or ex-wife of former Memphis cop Demetrius Haley. Additionally, Newsweek asked about the rumors that Haley sent photos of Nichols to his ex-wife following the violent arrest of the 29 year old black man all of this is still under investigation those are things along with the participations of others that are now subject to our investigation a spokesperson for shelby county district attorney told newsweek um which i think is okay i, I think when it comes to this investigate everything now that people are talking about it they got to investigate it but i don't know what where that came from you know if there was any proof of it uh, right erica williams the director of communications at shelby county district attorney's office clarified to newsweek that rumors about nichols having a connection to the woman have not been confirmed so if it hasn't been confirmed we really don't need to be spreading this uh we know that there have been questions about other officers and the fire department personnel on the scene persons remotely operating cameras the potential of false reporting among other things we are now at the stage of our investigation where we are looking into all of these matters williams told newsweek also a good thing at this time none of these accusations are confirmed however nothing is off the table as this is a very active investigation and still early in the investigation Williams added, last week, five former Memphis police officers were charged in the death of Nichols, who died from injuries following a traffic stop in the Hickory Hills neighborhood. Uh, the five officers are identified as Tadarius Mean, Demetrius Haley, Desmond oh Mills Jr., Emmett Martin III, and Justin Smith. They're all charged with one count of second-degree murder, aggravated assault, aggravated kidnapping, official misconduct, and official oppression. Mm. So uh, they're going to investigate it. So we don't know uh, if it's true. But you're saying that they're going to investigate it just because of the, the fake stories you're saying. Yeah, I mean, if uh, they're police. If people are talking about stuff, they're not going to take anything off the table, they're saying. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're saying that this is unverified due to right. lack of evidence. Yeah. yeah, as the parents have said that the room is not true. So, I mean, honestly, if we're being objective, they might not have known about it. But this is a you know they would want to <laughs> they would want to be forthcoming about any information about it. Um, after the introduction, I asked them any questions that they want me to send to the community, and the pop said yes. And with a stern and firm tone, he said, squash that rumor about our son dating one of those officers, wives, girlfriend. Please squash that rumor. That is not true. Uh, 
That's a quote from Bass, who is a general manager for the school's radio and TV station in Memphis, Shelby County. Uh, he wrote in a Facebook post. Yeah, so. yeah, so it's just a rumor now. Ben Crump is on the case. What do you think about Ben Crump? Uh, I think he just, you know, show face a different kind of, you know. I mean, he always he always is on popular cases, so he don't seem like seem like he just be on popular cases, man. I don't I don't think he's like a, you know. I know somebody gonna get sued when he come around. I'll say that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So it's like, is that a bad know. thing though? Right, that's his profession, but you know, he just seems like a, a clout chaser, you know, like every, but every, we all clout chase though. That's you know? what I always say. I mean, we all clout chasing though. But when you getting a real bag off of clout chasing like he is, it's like <laughs> it's a difference. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I don't I, I he he know he's from Parkway. I no. think, if I'm not mistaken, he's from okay. Lauderdale. Dang, he's from Lauderdale. I, I think he's from that. Parkway, though. I need to. I ain't know that. <laughs> yeah. I may need to watch my mind. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> he might be able to reach out and touch you. Eh? <laughs> no, nah, but, like, I just got that question for you because I'm still undecided about Ben Crump. He seems like he says the right things. He seems like he's uh, emotionally connected to these stories as am i so i haven't really you know i don't know how effective he is as an attorney i guess i need to do my um, right i mean he don't, to me he's not no johnny cochran you know what i mean oh well, johnny boy was like <laughs> he was the man but hey he may be the next coming best thing i mean i don't know i don't know i'll agree that he's not johnny cochran <laughs> He's Ben Crump. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? But uh we'll have to, you know, it's a developing story. So Johnny we'll definitely Cochran have say, to follow it. Club don't fit, you must have quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go back too far. We don't want to go back too far. But I do want to um hear a little bit of uh yeah. we know that recently Tyree Nichols had a funeral. Uh Al Sharpton was there. There were other notable figures in attendance, we'll say. And our friend Stephen Jackson has something to say. He had a response. I thought, well, we could react in real time because I really haven't heard the response. But I, I immediately was turned off because I just feel like Stephen Jackson is one of those guys that does a little bit too much. But let's not. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's see what let's see what Jack had to say. <laughs> Jack the King Clout Chaser. <laughs> he King Clout. <laughs> oh, am I sure? Hold on. Let me share my let me share my screen so I could let the audience in on it. Just in case you missed it, folks. Yeah, you know, well. Steven Jackson, he got he got something to say about all matters black. You know. <laughs> of course. Let's man. go. You got a podcast. Yeah, go get your steak, some mashed potatoes, season salad, Who and then it. Much love to everybody out there, man. You dig? I hope y'all having a blessed and prosperous day. Hope y'all living y'all life your way. Don't compromise. Speak your mind. Treat people how you want to be treated. Do something for somebody that don't benefit you. And stay out the way. Be sure to like, comment, really subscribe. I told y'all, y'all watch my podcast, Moves in Vegas. I love everybody, bro. I hope every, I hope every man catch their wave. Hope all y'all catch y'all wave, man. It's enough for us all out here. Nothing bad so far. Stay yeah, out the way, man. You got to stay out the way, man. You got to stay out the way. You got to stay out the way. Out the way, Jay. Deuce T, water guard, coming at you. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Of 
completely. I don't want to beef with nobody. I don't want to argue with nobody. I'm going to speak my mind. Man, you if you don't like what I got to say, so be it. I'm going to speak my mind. Hey, guys. Why you got What's up with it? I love everybody, dog. Yeah, why they in the cage? I love everybody. <laughs> I got my opinion, and I'm. You love everybody. You got this big <laughs> ass house, but you got the animals locked away in little cages. Whoa, we'll get back to that in a minute, man. I stand on my opinions and the way I feel, but I don't want to harm nobody, or argue with nobody, nothing like that. But I got my opinion. And I'm gonna stand up, on that, dog. and I don't do you I like it or not. You did. Hey y'all. Hey y'all. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to argue with nobody. I don't want to nobody. Man, get them puppies some water, man. <laughs> I don't want to beef with nobody. But you gonna respect my opinion? We don't have to respect your opinion. <laughs> you, you can have an opinion, but we don't have to respect it. Let's see what you got. Get to it. you. Uh... You ain't got to like it. You ain't got to agree with it. I'm fine with disagreeing with people. And I love everybody, man. Shout out to uh, uh, Sharpton and Crump, but I seen some shit. You know what I'm saying? I speak on shit that I know, that I see. Here we go. I don't speak on I shit that I know of, Sharpton, but I seen some shady shit Sharpton. than that George Boy time. Sharpton they know I seen it. Oh. I ain't got to go in detail about it, but you know what I'm saying? But I ain't much love to them. Keep doing y'all thing. I just speak on shit in the, in, on, in the real way. I ain't sugarcoat nothing. I put myself in the way. Whoever you is, bro, obviously you uh, either a cloud chaser or you don't know what you're talking about. I I know what I'm talking about. I have experience. And, it, and it's, I've said these things before on other shows. So it's it, a lot of people look better if they did their homework. He rolling up. You know what I'm saying? Before they just start speaking. Like all the people were saying all the stuff about Ginobili was better than me. And you and you entitled to saying that, but I had to show the numbers because Ginobili is one of my favorite teammates. We got along. Me and me and Ginobili didn't have no problem. But I had to post that because people just saying all the stuff but don't know how live I was. So sometimes you got to show people, man. Ain't nothing wrong with that, especially if it's facts. Oh, he's saying he was better than. I don't speak on stuff I don't know, and I was in the middle of. He was saying he got. You wasn't around in the George Floyd time, bro. So you can't tell me what I saw. You see what I'm saying? So ex people always say experience is the best teacher, right? So experience is the best teacher with everything, except when the athlete talking about other, uh, other athletes because the fans get in their feelings. You know what I'm saying? Experience is not the best teacher when another player is talking about another player. Oh, you don't know that? You just hate it. Yeah, he going off on another tangent now. I don't know. That, that can't be what everybody's reacting to. I don't, I don't see. Know. I don't hear nothing. He Let's really play it out. Him. Hold on. He he might have said it, it, it's fourteen seconds, sixteen seconds left. He man, I'm tired him. of hearing him, man. I don't <laughs> know how anybody could watch it. Oh, uh -uh. I'll play it out. Hold on. Well, I got the experience, fam. <laughs> That's what you wanted. <laughs> That's it. I don't yeah, know man. Be calling them out, but I can't. I think I called them out. I don't like Al Sharpton's character, man. I mean, to hear some of the things he did, you know, when he uh, was an informant for the uh, FBI and tried to get Don King, bam. Yeah, I don't think he's, a, I definitely think he's a clout chaser. Man, you acting like he snitched on you or something. You feel me? What you got to do with Don King? Yeah, I just... <laughs> <laughs> You ain't seen the uh tape. They got a tape where he was recorded and he was, you know, talking to the drug guy or whatever. And uh he got out of that deal or whatever. He was an informant for the mob, you know, he informed and got the mob cased up. I mean, I'm just saying he didn't he don't seem like a to me when you go on things like that, it's just you just don't seem credible or genuine, you know. My know. opinion. How you feel about Al Sharpton? He's all right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. I don't know too know much, much about, about him. About him. I know um, he put he put in some work in the streets. I respect, you know, his legacy. You know, sound like what? Put in um, some work in the streets. What kind of work you talking about? Activism. 
Oh, you know, he he sheds light on a lot of things that needed to be, you know, needed to be spoke on. Yeah. So I I can't, you know, I gonna, and, then, know and then at dope. least yeah, at least good. at least Al Sharpton is out there trying to make moves politically, you know, in some way. I ain't saying he's he not really my hero or anything like that, but he's at least involved in politics. I don't see Stephen Jackson even. Does Stephen Jackson even tell people to vote? Does he vote? I only seen him talking about George Floyd, you know. Who was he to be talking about um uh, Al Sharpton, you know? <laughs> Al Sharpton was out here for a minute, bro. You know, that's kind of like one of our elders, you know. Yeah, yeah. Nigga gotta bring me something on Al Sharpton that's like you know, heavy, you know. I I ain't out here caping for Al Sharpton, but you gotta tell right. me something he did. I mean, that was so terrible, you know what I'm saying? Like, seem like he be out here trying to step for us, right? Yeah, I mean, he be he definitely be you know, trying to, you know, maybe he felt, you know, I, I, I can admit that he'd be out here uh stepping on, on on business but i don't know let's see what the uh i i don't know that that video right there maybe because i see people reacting that really wasn't that crazy mm -hmm. to me but yeah. i see an article in the room let's see let's see what they talking about let's get to the bottom of this because they're saying that he went crazy <laughs> yeah i don't see it i don't see it i don't see it no, nah, we probably missed some. I heard them saying stuff about stay out the way. What was that like subliminals? I don't know. But let's look at the this is from the root. You know, they be speaking on black issues. Uh, sir has several seats. Steven Jackson ignorantly criticizes Al Sharpton's Tyree Nichols speech. Uh, funeral services were held for Tyree Nichols yesterday at Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church in Memphis, in addition to his mother, father, and sister all delivering powerful remarks. Vice President Kamala Harris made an appearance to denounce another black life loss because of police brutality. Al Sharpton delivered right. the eulogy, and Ben Crump also shared words. Kamala Harris pulled up? Yeah, uh, Kamala. <laughs> I'll read uh I'll read what Benjamin Crump said. Uh the reason why Mr. and Miss Wells, Nichols' stepfather and mother, uh what happened to Tyree is so personal to me is that five black men that wouldn't have had a job in the police department would not ever be thought of to be in an elite squad in the city that Dr. King lost his life not far away from that balcony. You beat a brother to death. Sharpton said. <laughs> I guess what I get what he's saying. He's saying they would have never even had their job if it wasn't for Martin Luther King and he just got killed. Or he when he got killed, it wasn't far away from where they beat him to death. So I get how he pulled it together. Uh Crump stated why why couldn't they see the the humanity in Tyree Crump said to of the officers involved. We have the God given right to say, I am a human being and I deserve justice, not just any justice, but equal justice. Uh, however, as far as Sharpton and Crump are concerned, former basketball player Steven Jackson believes that they were capitalizing off of the death of yet another innocent black person at the hands of the police. Jackson took to social media to share his thoughts. Oh, I guess that was I guess that video we watched was Steven responding to the backlash. But let's let's see what he said on social media. Y'all keep letting these folk fool y'all. Same scene, Al Sharpton and Crump crew. All, All for, for political the, gain. Yeah. They prey on people's pain. Seen it firsthand with G. Floyd. If it's not a national media case, you won't see them. Yet we getting killed everywhere by police. Free game. Not only were Jackson's comments ignorant, but they were dismissive of the work Sharpton and Crump have been doing for decades. Ironically, Jackson came to the prominence as an activist following the death of George Floyd, which was a national media case. Even more ironically, Sharpton has been protesting, marching, organizing, speaking out, and fighting for black people longer than Jackson has been alive. I said that. Not to mention he, as well as Crump, put their lives on the line daily to bring attention to injustice against black people. Over the course of their civil rights work, they have been targeted, harassed, attacked. Sharpton was stabbed 
by one of his detractors in 1991. That's what I was talking about where, where I say Sharp didn't put pain out here in the streets. He was out there protesting and somebody jugged him. All of them people he snitched on, man. <laughs> he was in the street for real. Sharpton was a gangster, though. You and it, y'all, y'all, y'all get, y'all get it. Oh, no, yeah. it was, I, I don't it's on video. He was a gangster, now. He was doing his thing. Don I want to see it. You know, I don't know. I mean, I'm not denying it, but I just don't know how well you vetted that information. That so I would just want to independently confirm, but. That's another. That's another story. We all got a pass, you know. Every every every, every uh, yeah. You know, you you got a pass. I got a pass. Who you? When you trying yeah. to be on a, a moral high ground? You trying to be on a high horse, nigga? A nigga no, could have been in the street at one point as a when black man. In them streets, and you go tell on the mob. You know, he admitted he told that on he the was. Mob? A, yeah, he admitted that he was an FBI informant. You need to look up Sharp and Russ Sharp and Untold. I've heard that before, but yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I don't care about that. You know what I'm saying? The man is out here speaking on black issues, trying to, you know, push the line. I don't care about that. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but their respective documentaries, <laughs> Loud Mouth and Civil, Ben Crump, were released last year to chronicle their journeys as public advocates for the black community. Oh, they got a little documentary that dropped. Yeah, check that out. Uh, most recently, Crump made headlines for not only standing beside the Nichols family following the death of Tyree, but for announcing a lawsuit against Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for prohibiting an AP African American Studies course. Critiquing, uh, critiquing Crump and Sharpton's methods for how they seek justice for black families is one thing, but to act like their efforts are completely disingenuous is another. Instead of coming after two men who have galvanized the black community over and over again in the face of racism and hate, Jackson should focus on using his platform to do the same. No, that's an opinion piece. Uh, yeah, it's I, don't think that was, I don't think they were far off, though. I mean... I be seeing Steven Jackson, you know, threaten to fight people. And he was on <laughs> old block talking about he checked in and it don't seem like he was doing much different during the George Floyd case. I could have easily said he was a clout chaser. He probably, you know, I could have been like, yo, Steven Jackson know a lot of niggas in the hood that probably ain't here no more. I ain't see him causing all of that, you know, riff raff death. He wasn't kicking up all of that dust. You know what I'm saying? George Floyd, the only person that done died. You feel me from the hands of police or or gun violence, you know, or anything like that. And you made a big deal about that. Did you make a big deal about your other homeboys? You see how easy that is to just have a very pessimistic view of what somebody's trying to do is a good thing. There's a lot of things we could beat up on people on if they're saying something that's not wrong. I mean, if they're saying something that's not right, if they've shown to be doing a scam or something like that, I'm all for it. We could criticize them. But we we seen the tape. Uh, they were promptly uh, charged and arrested. It seemed like, you know, it's, it's not going to be hard to convict these guys. If there's somebody pushing the issue, representing people pro bono, uh, trying to get bills passed. I mean, damn. You know, say so even if you're going to criticize them, you got to do a better job than that. You need to have your stuff lined up and you need to have maybe a plan of action to to make things change you know as far as uh police reform goes and stuff like that or you need to be talking about you know who who you think should be in charge if you have a hard line opinion about it you should probably do a better job of criticizing them criticizing them than what stephen jackson did i'll say that okay yeah you know? i can i can i can say that you know yeah, if they're trying to be the leaders in this project, if that's who we got to look up to, yeah, I mean, who else we got? In work. I know we don't have anybody, and that'd be the problem too because our leaders, man, I a lot of our got nobody. Yeah, we. I mean, you got to. I mean, since I our mean, guys died, we don't have the people that really connect with the people like that, like how you know Martin and Malcolm did, man. And, you know. I yeah. can say a few other names, but I can see that they just be at, you know, situations, but we don't see them guys like how we seen Martin and Malcolm. Them, them guys was really in the field. Them guys was really like, 
You know what I mean? Well, we still got some good people. I appreciate the work that Al Sharpton's doing. I don't have a reason to dislike Ben Crump. Uh, I see the good work that Yvette Carnell is doing with Yes, ADOS. that's somebody that needs to be, and, you know, that's somebody yeah, that's doing somebody some needs work. To be lift up, so, that you know, should be shouted uh, out. Yeah, I ain't going to say we don't got nobody. I like what Charleston White is doing, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, if, you, know you, if you like them, you like them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, but, Yvette Carnell, we got some people out here that's standing on business, but I can honestly say I don't, I, I never seen nothing that Al Sharpton never said or anything he's trying to put together or some programs he's with that I can say that he's like, I can see this, but I don't see like, well, is it possible that he's doing a lot of things that you're just not aware of? Have you done a deep dive on Al Sharpton? I can't say I've done a deep dive, but I shouldn't have to. Like you've been around for a long time. You've been around. So you should, it should be nothing for us to know that you got something going on. And you know, all it, all it takes is to read. Maybe he's doing things that you just haven't looked up. Maybe you, you think know. you think they, you said you shouldn't have to, so you think the information is just supposed to fall in your lap. He's supposed to knock on your door and be like, Hey, Bob, it's out here. Just wanted to let you know, you know, say some things I did in the past, <laughs> some things I've been doing recently, or is it your responsibility to seek out the information? Black man, <laughs> you, know, man I, you know, to me, it just it just seems like may be compromised man it don't seem like he really want to be loud and standing on our business you know that's my opinion. compromised by who i don't know i just like his things he doing may be compromised i don't oh, know you just, i can't oh, so tie into who or what i'm just saying it okay don't. you don't know who or what you don't really know you just you just speaking on something you know, i speak thought you were talking about something you know yeah but you, you <laughs> say you just talk about something you really don't know no, I can't. I, I'm not gonna say. You know who? Who is he? I said that from how I'm seeing how he move, it looked like it may be compromised. You know, that's all I'm saying. Um, but interesting. He's insight. standing on good business with you. You saying that you know he having his little speeches when we, you know, when every time we got tragedies, that's good. I mean, if that's standing on business to you, then I mean. Did I say that that's standing on business? I asked you to defend what you what were saying. What do you saying. know about you Al said he, it seemed it seemed compromised? I said based on what? What what is who's compromised by who? And you couldn't say anything. When I see him, I don't say okay. So what do you know Al Sharpton standing on? What do you know him for? I know him for speaking out on black issues, activism. Like when cases happen, people get beat up <laughs> by the police. Right, he's there fighting. Okay. Yeah. Trying to get a bill passed. They mentioned it in the article. Is Steven Jackson pushing for bills to get passed? <laughs> <laughs> is he? Yeah, I do what? Is, is there anything that he's pushing for? What business is he standing on? I, no, I'm not comparing. Yeah, I'm not comparing the two. I never. Okay, you know so all I mean? I'm trying to say is if you say that he looks like he could be compromised, I'm asking you to explain what you're talking about. I'm like, who who do you think he's compromised by? Like what? What are you saying? That's all. It just don't <laughs> you know. I don't want to get. I don't want to bash the brother, but uh, yeah. I you mean, already bad. He already bashed. You bashed yeah, him man. already. <laughs> he already bashed because that ship is sailed. Yo, that ship. I'm just sailed, saying. Yeah. You might be. You might have been led astray about Al Sharpton. I think he's one of those guys that might get a bad might, rap. He might he be like that. FBI. Yeah, I think that could be. That could he be. get a big get a bad rap. Right. I, I, I think just black leaders get that. You know, some of them are some charlatans, and then some of them just get a bad <laughs> rap. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's hard to tell who's who sometimes. Right. It's hard to tell who is who. You're right. I can get I you can I can understand that. That's why I said before I'm gonna jump out there on them, I'm gonna get my my ducks in a row. You feel me? If I don't know, I don't know. 
<laughs> but now, I, I know go, about that. Like, fa- I know about that uh, FBI informant. That I don't know. care about that though. I really yeah. don't care. I, he ain't told on me though. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not looking at him you. like. If he bro, don't tell listen, on you. Li- no, listen. If he told on you. You would be listen, like, man, listen, you ain't listen. right. Go yeah, ahead. I would be like he ain't right. I'll, I'll probably hold it against him if he told on me. But when it comes to people who's speaking on black issues, people who's going to be helping us in the political sphere. I'm not going to disqualify somebody because they might have told on somebody back in the day and I don't know the situation. We might have to take on some unlikely allies, though. That's not what I'm using <laughs> as a qualifier, though. I don't know what the right. situation was, well, but that yeah. ain't a big deal to me, though. <laughs> that ain't a big deal. It was the mob. I don't know what the situation was. They might have wanted to kill him or something. They might have betrayed <laughs> him first. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he wasn't telling. Maybe he was just straightening things out. Maybe they tried to put some shit on him. <laughs> he tried. I don't know. Right. Don't well, know. just to straight, just to clean my name, so you don't feel like I'm just jumping out there on uh, just you know, from what I got from the story that I got, and it wasn't you know I actually seen him. You know, you know he actually was gonna get in trouble, and decided to uh, do that. So it was like he wasn't a clean fish, and he decided to uh, you know deter and tell on the mob. So. That's where I'm going. That to me is, you know, you it's know, a little shady. You know, that's all. And I, when you got that, that's just, you know, little... it, I see people, you know, whatever, man. all that's the time. Right. Thing. I feel you. I feel you. Are you right? No, it's no, it's no, like whether he did it or not, guy, we right. could get into that. Right. I don't really, that don't really change nothing for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, he would still be my guy if I like. Say, let's let's assume <laughs> let's assume that was true, right? Right. If he was out here standing on business for black people, trying to get justice for the the Nichols family or some semblance of justice, you feel me? And the only thing that they could bring up is maybe back in the day he told on the mob to get out of trouble. I could forgive him for that. I, I'll leave it at that. I mean, I could you no. Know, it's that. It's just it's, you know, like you said, we gotta understand. We we be liking to understand people' characters. Us, you know, once we from that cloth, we want to know that you got good. You stand on a good foundation of morals, you know. And I can see he's standing on good morals now. I can see that, but from back in his past, from what I showed it, you know, he's. Yeah, seen, I mean, I think you made that clear. We don't want to keep saying that. We get it. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> But uh, Crump is, you know, we I'm in Florida right now. 